out of all the heroes in Bloons Sea Battles 2, which is the one you see the least? And I'm guessing a lot of you guys said Biker Bones, but Biker Bones actually has a really good level 8 ability where all monkeys near him get plus 5% range and 30% pierce. Now, what tower benefits a lot from pierce buffs? That's the spike factory, ladies and gentlemen. So today, I'll be pairing the perma spike with Biker Bones and let's see what happens. All right, guys, our first match of today's video is on the map Bloonstone Quarry with an interesting strategy here, Bomb Village Spike Factor. I'm not sure if I've actually ever used this on the channel before, but it should be interesting with Biker Bones because Biker Bones obviously pairs pretty well with the bomb shooter, but gives a ton of buffs to it. But also the main thing I want to showcase was Biker Bones and Spike Factor. So I was thinking, if I'm bringing Bomb and Spike Factory, what's a third that I want to bring? And Village came to mind because Village, Village Farmings are pretty good. Village will give us the home and defense buff. But Village also buffs primary towers like the Bomb Shooter. So should be an interesting combo. We're going to Uncle Peanuts here though, who's starting with their Tax Shooter and their Etienne. Fair enough. I kind of don't want to leak ideally. So I'm probably going to tower boost this round to make sure that doesn't happen. I leaked it and I there's no way I leaked bro that is so annoying how I leaked one life too I guess they leaked on top of it so it's hopefully not the end of the world because I want to have the life advantage but who knows they might have life rejuvenation in their strategy was my main concern they're gonna have some form of life rejuvenation but if they do have life rejuvenation that means they'd have like tack and heli or tack and druid and if they had those, no matter what their third tower is, they're not defending to round 40, even if it's like a super monkey or a village. So it honestly shouldn't matter at the end of the day if I am at a life um, disadvantage. You know what I mean? So now I kind of think about it. Maybe I shouldn't worry too much. All right, pink balloons. Let's get bigger bombs in the sky. Perfect. Uh, I might leak a little bit to these. I need to get heavy bombs on my side. Uh, right now, we're kind of defending pink balloons, though. Holy. I've got about 15 lives I can leak while still having a life advantage, so let's get heavy bombs up now, and then I'm chilling. Now, unfortunately, we don't have something like Bonnie early game where I can just put money into the minecarts and make an absurd amount of cash, so because we are lacking Bonnie, we are just going to go straight grouped balloon eco. Been a while since I've done this, but we're doing that, and then just in space when I kind of run out of money here. But yeah, eco versus eco strategy. I really don't know what Uncle Peanuts could be running with Tack and Etienne. Maybe a tax sniper combination. I have seen a lot of people going tax sniper loadouts. Could also could also honestly be um tax sniper super monkey. I have seen that loadout floating around here. So it is a pretty decent late game loadout. But who knows? Send them some black balloons. Let's also get my farmer and my balloon bot in here. Opponent used the drone swarm ability, which means they won't have drone swarm ability available for round seven yellow balloons, which I think is a mistake from Uncle Peanuts. Normally you want to have that help out against the yellows so yellows are gonna be a problem for them oh it's boat okay attack boat we'll see what they do here they go for grape shot they go for hot shot i'm gonna balloon boost hot shot should not really do much they'll, they'll probably get into a cannon ship cannon ship will help out a lot but hot shots not gonna help out a ton all right there's the cannon ship now they're good got a little bit of leaks on them though and the nice part of my strategy is I've got really cheap round 11, round 13 defense. All I need basically round 11 is just our cluster bomb and our biker bones should be fine. Especially with level 4 biker, which makes our bomb shooter shoot 10% faster. And then round 13, I probably just need two clusters and our Raider, Raider Skinner Village. So that'll be the plan. That'll be the plan. I'll be able to get pretty dang good economy. I already have pretty dang good economy. I've got almost 800 right now. All right. Can I get... Is this a good village spot? Let me think. Right here. Because I want to leave space to the right of the village for a spike factory later. Because the spike factory needs to be in the range of biker bones to get that nice little pierce buff that I was talking about in the introduction. Okay. Let's get discounts on this. Do I squeeze out a little monkey economy or is that too greedy? I'm going to squeeze it out. I'm going to squeeze it out like lemon juice, ladies and gentlemen. And I still should be before this Raider Scanner for round 12, even with the Monkey Economy play. Oh, look at this. We both have Spike Factory. Tack both Spike Factory is an interesting loadout. I don't think it's very good. Like, hmm. I mean, they have Etienne, so their Spike Factory can defend rushes for them because Tack and Boat aren't really going to do much against like a round 13 rush. I mean, Boat and Spike Factory aren't going to do much, but Tack can. So I guess that makes sense. But late game, I don't really think they've got much going for them with that loadout in the later game rounds. I don't see the I don't see the vision. All right, 
we are gonna actually wait i should probably stop be going for a second here now i think about it are they rushing me destroyer okay bro's over here playing btd6 we're gonna get a second monkey economy up and we got some space uh, one space ceramic honestly we should be decently finding a space ceramics maybe get this into a cluster bomb okay they send a lot two cluster bombs should be enough though especially when they're getting buffed by biker bones even against a balloon boost i think we're chilling okay, even against a balloon boost we're chilling might leak a little bit but nothing crazy yeah look at this this is such a cheap but effective way to defend right here and we've got village farms on top of it i like our positioning quite a bit all right do i have the level eight yet i don't all monkeys near biker bones get plus five percent range plus 30 percent pierce now the five percent range it's nice but it's not really super impactful for us it's mostly the pierce that i'm looking for and i'll go for a spike factory probably is this in the range of biker it is okay right here and we'll get this into a long life spike so 30 percent pierce on spike factory is pretty much just a 30 percent overall damage buff because pierce is essentially damaged with the spike factory instead of each spike dealing a total of 10 damage and 10 pierce or whatever it's now 13 which is pretty nice and it does translate to like the perma spike and stuff later on as well which is huge all right uh grouped ceramic rush incoming i'm pretty sure these cluster bombs though buffed by biker are actually pretty insane yeah that ceramic rush actually got pretty an annihilated in that ceramics are always one of the strongest rushes in the game so biker bomb is really strong honestly put this on far targeting a little bit look at this the spikes right here they're thrown getting thrown down right here if they send me a moab class balloon the moab has a bigger hitbox and it'll come down here eat up the spikes turn into ceramics and they'll have easy ceramic cleanup so a little bit of spikes on far targeting i think it's a really smart decision here defensively not all of them we don't put it back on smart now i think <clears throat> i really hope i get sent a moab or a fortified moab so i can see if this works out the way i'm kind of planning okay here we go oh it's three fortified mobs no way that spike power is gonna hit pop all three it might pop one though oh it didn't even pop one okay it, it, it hit the moabs don't get me wrong it hit the moabs it just didn't really do much all right we'll get a impact up then yeah we actually annihilated that that's so you uh, do I sell the impact? I am going to, and I'm going to get up a monkey city on our side. Get Lydia with the monkey city. Be really greedy. Okay, BFB. Let's go back to our tactic. Smart, not smart targeting, far targeting. Throw it on the spikes right there. Let's see how this works out. If I can pop the BFB layer with spike factory. It's going to get increased production at the start of the round. I'm going to get plus 30% pierce as well. Uh, we almost popped it smart targeting more ceramics incoming okay sell the camel village because why not i don't need camel detection if they're not semi camos we have double damage i did not realize i got the double damage from biker bones that actually helps out a ton okay well i made that i made the defend defend way too much complicated way more complicated than it needed to be basically level 10 biker bones makes that super easy Double damage on the bomb shooters is huge. It's more it's more impactful than a tower boost, to be honest, because tower boost, I think, is like plus 66% attack speed. It actually might be plus 60%. I'm not entirely sure. But double damage is more than 60%. So, yeah. Is that a ZOMG? Okay. So, one thing I'm not actually sure how it works is I don't know if the Biker Bones Pierce buff helps Spike Storms. Because I saw, I remember there was something where Spike Storms can't get Pierce buffed. So I'm not sure if this works out the way I'm thinking, but we'll test it. Spike Storm. Well, actually, wait till it stops an enemy Camel Purples. I don't want it to block it. Spike Storm now. Let's stun it. I honestly should have enough defense as is. All I need to do is Biker Bones ability these um insides. Give myself double damage. Because the double damage recursive cluster just shreds. Yeah, there we go. That was simple defend. Alright, so monkey apples on my side. 
Oh, and they surrender. I've destroyed every single rush. Yeah, dude, that was a pretty easy game. I'm not going to lie. Don't know what Uncle Peanuts was cooking there. All right, our next match here is against MGO. We are on the map of Star here. So I got another long map, which is what I want. Now, they brought Snow Pass. So it's Darling Ice combination, I'm guessing. Now, the question is, is it Darling Ice Farm? Is it Darling Ice Village? I'm not entirely sure. So we'll have to wait and see on that one. But we're starting with the Frag Bomb. I'm going to get Cluster Bomb up again. Ideally, I don't leak early game because... We have a more late game oriented loadout, so that'll be the plan if possible. No round one snowpack coming out from MGO, that's fine. <clears throat> Let's get our cluster bombs up. And now we can go kind of spaced e grouped eco mode after I got that bad boy up. And we'll see how things are playing out. Now, as for biker bones placement, I'll just kind of place it whenever I get the money for it. I don't want to leak beforehand, so we'll play it pretty safe defensively. I don't really think getting Biker Bones down like round one or two is super important like some other heroes. You can place Biker Bones a little bit later and still be completely fine with them, in my opinion. But yeah. Alright, both sending each other blues. So they have an eco strategy, most likely Darling Ice Village, which means if I can make them leak, ladies and gentlemen, and stay leak this on my own end, I will be sitting pretty. I'll be sitting very pretty. I'll be liking that a lot. So that will probably be the plan. Not entirely sure how I'm going to get leaks on Dartling, though. Dartling is one of the better towers at managing leaks. I'll probably get a Heavy Bombs here in a second. So I don't leak to Pink Balloons. Yeah, they got Powerful Darts on there, and they're fine. Nicely done. I still don't have Biker Bones on my side. I actually did not even need to get Heavy Bombs up. I thought they'd send me Pinks. I could have probably greeted for Biker Bones this round instead of Heavy Bombs. Now that I think of it. Maybe I can, maybe I can still get Biker Bones down. Wait a second. Yeah, we still got him down. All right, so it wasn't the end of the world. And we'll send greens. Actually, what if I layer greens and whites? Can I sneak some leaks on their side here? I didn't really have enough money to do it initially. We'll try it again. Balloon boost. We forced pad ability on their side. Is that enough? Uh, looks like it kind of is, unfortunately. Wait! What? Oh, no, they did leak. They did leak. For a second there, I thought they didn't. Ah, he hits me with the wow. I'm hitting him with the hearts. I'm hitting him with the hearts. That's what I'm talking about. We got leaks on their side. They're down to 144. Okay. So not a ton of leaks. I could leak as well. Don't get me wrong. Against something random. Honestly, do I go for a spike factory on our side just to be like super safe? Just to be super duper safe? I don't know if it's a necessity. Do I have enough trust in my bomb shooter not to whiff? Uh, they're leaking a lot now. Okay. They are leaking a lot, lot now. So, I don't really need to play it safe. And we have seen all three towers from my opponent, too. So, we know they have zero life rejuvenation. Dartling, Ice, Village, and Snowpat. Strategy I've used a lot on the channel before. It is a pretty good loadout. Don't get me wrong. But, that life advantage is going to be very nice for us. Alright, they're upgrading the village to discounts. I'm guessing that's going to be an early monkey economy. Most likely is what they're going to do with that. Again, I don't, really, I don't really agree with going for a monkey economy super early. Like, I like to get my monkey economy up, like, round... 11, 12, 13, 14 that time. Picking up like round 8, I don't think smart. I think the eco is just a better play at this point. In my opinion. Oh, look at the leaks. Oh my gosh. 61 lives. So they did get discounted middle path dartling though, which was nice for them because of their village. So that is one thing that needs to be considered. Our village placement will probably be right here. And I should have left spot. Yeah, there's still space for another bomb shooter here. That's why I kind of placed my Biker Bones a little more to the left. Also, I wanted to make sure that the Biker Bones could reach where my Spike Factory is later. So that was my thought process behind the placement. I am going to do the same thing as last time and try to be greedy with an early economy. If they rush me around 11, depending on the size of the rush, Cluster Bomb might solo. I might have to use Biker Bones ability. I might have to Tower Boost. It really just depends. We'll see if they rush. Right now, it doesn't appear so, though. Okay. We have a second Bomb Shooter right here. Just preemptively. They're going for a third monkey economy. I need to force the ice shards in their side. There we go. Force the ice shards. I'll buy the camo village. We're good. And honestly, kind of want to get a second monkey economy in my end here. We don't want to place it. I'll just place it in the middle. Wait. Tower boost this. I don't want to lose life advantage. I don't want to lose life advantage. Alright, we're fine. I have a spike factory in the back now. I probably could have defended that without tower boost, I'll be completely honest. Even though they're balloon boosted, I think two cluster bombs and biker 
would have been fine with just some leaks. But again, I think using a tower boost just to be safe for the life advantage is a smart decision at the end of the day. I do want to get the second monkey economy up though. That did delay my second monkey economy, so I am getting out monkey economy pretty hard right now from Mr. MGO. Their monkey economy game goes crazy, ladies and gentlemen. Alright, we got our second one up. They do have a lot cheaper defense though, so we have to keep that in mind. I mean, Ice Shards, Darling, Snowpat is really cheap defense compared to comparatively to um two cluster bombs and I have to get a Raider Scanner Village on top of that. I didn't really need the smart spikes bigger stacks, but I just got this up to maintain life advantage. And it's going to be a nice going to some of the mob class rounds too. Just to have that in the back. Building up. Building up a stack in the back ready to attack. You know what I'm saying? Well, we're about to get level 8 biker bones, which is nice. So, big buff to my spike factory right there. Honestly, weird decision. But what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to get a, a spike factory right here, believe it or not. Just a low tier spike factory. Just a couple of these spikes on the map will deal some really good mob class damage. I'm pretty sure I can defend a mob now. Just like one mob with this setup. Um, most likely. Where beforehand I would need to buy a mob mauler if they send me one. I don't know if MGO is going to send mobs though. Maybe that was not smart. Preemptively buying that. <clears throat> I do want to force more defense on their end though. Even though they've got a pretty nice setup. I can definitely force defense with some zebra balloon eco. So I'll probably send that on round 19. Because round 19, the AI balloons start to get a little bit stronger. So if we mix in some Zebra Eco with it, that could cause some havoc on MGO's end. So that'll be the plan. All right, let's send it now. They're most likely going to use Snowpad ability. Don't die. Oh my gosh. No way you die. Why do you die, bro? I just threw the content. I didn't think he would die, guys. Like, he waited 10 minutes to use the snowpad ability. Why would you wait so long? All right, no shot this guy dies to something stupid like that. His name's Sigma, so we got to give him a, sh a chance here. And they are going a pretty good loadup with ET and Bomb Shooter, I'd imagine. So, this should be a fun one. We did secure the life advantage early game, which is fantastic. So, we love to see that. But yeah, I get the question a lot, actually, of why I kind of err on the side of playing more passive in a lot of my videos, even if I could like easily rush my opponent force defense and that's kind of the reason why like if i kill my opponent early with something stupid like that i can't really get a fun and exciting game for the most part i mean there's still some exciting stuff that happened that match and some learning parts for us for sure but no late game defense now if i'm now if i'm against like a top opponent like someone who's like in the top 10 in the world i'll send them rushes and stuff you know i can send good rushes and i know they'll know how to defend it but against just random opponents, I err on the side of caution most of the time for that reason. But yeah, this map though, thankfully, we don't actually need to buy heavy bombs early game. This map is really strong for the bomb shooter, so we're able to just chill with a with a one zero three cluster these first couple rounds. On the other end though, this map this map does get anti stalled a lot more, so our eco most likely won't be as strong as some of the other games. But that's totally fine. That's totally fine if we don't get as good of an eco. We'll send some zebra balloons towards my opponent. If they send me zebras, I'll just get heavy bombs here and this will be enough. We're actually starting to leak a little bit, which is surprising. Even with the extra 10% attack speed on my bomb shooter. Huh. I kind of wanted to get a discount village before I bought the heavy bombs. I think I still will do that. And the village placement will be right here. Spike factory for the opponent as well. Dude, look at this. We're both going bomb spike factory for the last match of today's video. It's actually pretty interesting. Okay. So we got discounts now. So I can get this cheap heavy bombs. Uh, if they don't rush me though, I'm still not buying it. I'm not going to buy it till it's forced. Oh wait, that's not actually in the... How was that not in the range, bro? I got to range buff my village. To Yeah, that's what I have to do. I thought that would easily be in the range. Holy cow. Okay. Oh well. We got it now. We're chilling now. We're chilling. We're chilling. Let's get this new monkey economy. Opponent got a what's it called? Spike factor on their end, and then sold it. I want to send them some space ceramics. What tower boost this? We forced a what's it called? Bigger, really big bombs on their end. Okay. 
Does that actually defend? It looks like it does. Wow, surprisingly. All right, we got two monkey economies on our side. Let's get cluster bombs here now. All right, everything's fine. And I'd like to get spike factory down too. Double cluster should defend this pretty easily, I'd imagine. Yeah, that, that, that cleans up well. Okay. That cleans up well. I'm not going to upgrade the spike factory much. I need to be pretty greedy here, especially against a farm loadout. And our early game was not necessarily played ideal with the village mishap there. But we're kind of got our feet under us now, thankfully. We still have two tower boosts remaining too, so even using that tower boost was not awful. Let's get our farmer and our balloon bot in here. Let them join the party. I'm actually surprised that a really big bombs play worked out. I haven't really seen people use that upgrade defensively. I think it's more expensive than cluster bombs though, isn't it not? Is it not? So I guess double cluster would have defended um, space ceramics for them as well, but they ended up going bigger bombs. I don't know how the prices of them work out though. Which one's more expensive and which one's cheaper. But the advantage of them going for like this, for example, is that can be turned into a balloon impact, which is really helpful for like fortified Moab rushes from them. Or if you went double cluster, you still need a balloon impact later for fortified mobs if the opponent sends a lot. Speaking about fortified mobs, are they going to send me any? And it looks like that answer is yes. Plan is to use the biker bone stun against the fortified ceramics. Okay, we're good there. Got a little bit scared because of the ceramics I sent behind it, but I did not really need this bomb shooter on the field. We were chilling either way. I'd like to get up a monkey city before round 20, ideally, because round 20 is a really quick round, so the farm income kind of goes crazy on round 20. So that'll be the plan here. Round 20. Let's try to get this monkey city up. I can sell you. I can sell you. I still need one eco boost. I might not get it up then. Oh, we got it. We got it. Nice little greed play. I'll take it. Can we pop this Moab with our spikes that are left around the map? <clears throat> Doesn't really look like it. Dude, my throat is like so dry. I've been drinking water too. I don't know why. I keep having to like clear my throat. All right, we're good. We're good. We're good. Plan would be to build us into a monkey office as soon as possible. I do kind of still want to get Spike Factory back in the placed back here though, just for safety purposes, especially because it's getting buffed by Biker. So we'll get deadly spikes down. Just something to keep me safe, warm and dry, you know what I'm saying? Do I want to force, do I want to send them anything? Probably tight leads. Tight leads are a rush I like always like to send because you don't lose eco sending it. You actually gain eco sending it. So it's normally a pretty good bang for your buck rush wise. Even if I they have decent defense against like recursive clusters, I still think it's decent value. We'll send it. Just a couple of sets first because they'll probably use a UCAV ability against it. Oh, they actually go double recursive. Are they dead? Oh my gosh, another opponent almost threw. That would have been annoying. Okay. They defended though. Double recursive cluster and UCAV. So I, for I forced a lot with that, which was good. Let's see if I can bait them into getting defense. I'm going to stop sending balloons. Balloon boost. Okay, we forced a recursive cluster with just one set of tight leads. That's exactly what I wanted. Just a small rush to bait defense quickly. Nothing too crazy. Uh, sell that and get this guy up. I didn't want to sacrifice into it. Monkey Opus is now on the field. That's huge. And now with that guy, we're going to continue sending Max Pink Balloon Eco, but the extra money will go into more village farms. I do need to be prepared in case the semi tight mobs. Tight mobs can be a little bit scary, but I do have the double damage from Biker Bones, which is humongous against tight mob rush. So if they send one, we can use that. Still no fifth tier farm from Sigma. They're actually going for two BRFs, which is interesting. Not something you see every day. All right. Yeah, are they not going to get a fifth tier farm down? They just went for a central market as well. I'm so confused what's going on on my opponent's side of the screen here. I mean, on my side, we're chilling. We've got really good village farms. We've got pretty good eco too. Oh, they're selling everything now for the monkey wall sheet. Okay. Interesting play. Two BRFs sold, sold into the Monkey Wall Street. Typically, I don't like going for BRFs before the Monkey Wall Street because the BRF only has a 
70% sellback value, while if you go for the bottom path central markets, you get 80%, which makes it a little bit of a smarter play. But either way, they got the Wall Street up. Can't really complain. Uh, let's go for this guy. Pretty easy to defend there. I'm going to stop my eco at 5k, by the way. 5k eco is more than enough for what we want here, I think. And honestly, at this point, I'd like to save it for a perma spike. I feel like perma spike's a good buy. Where do I want to have it, though? Hmm. Do I want to have it here? Yeah, we'll keep it here. We'll keep it here. There's 5,000 eco. Should be a good perma spike here in a second. Because perma spike, believe it or not, I think can pop a fortified BED layer if I get it early enough, especially with the plus 30% pierce from Biker Bones. I'll put the spikes on close targeting, which is going to throw them right where my cursor is. It's also good jungle drums on this guy. And the BED's hitbox is big enough where the BED will hit these spikes, if that makes sense. And then essentially... Oh wait, I think the Moabs are hitting the spikes, which is not good. Hmm. My plan is basically to pop the BED with the perma spike. Yeah, the mobs are hitting the spikes. That's not good. What I can do against mobs then is get a mob shredder right here. And that'll hopefully pop some of the mobs down a little bit so the perma spike takes less damage. My plan essentially is to just get a balloon crush. Why am I still ecoing? I lost my train of thought. Get a balloon crush against the insides. Perma spike pops the BED layer. Balloon crush against the insides. I don't know if my perma spike pile is big enough though. Because we are taking spike pile damage from every mob that's coming out. So it just might not be big enough. I also haven't had it up for a very long time as well. So it is what it is. I can afford Balloon Crush pretty easily here though, which is nice. There it is. Let's see how we do. How big is this pile? Oh, we almost popped it. Look at that. It actually did better than I expected for how short of a time I had that perma spike up. Oh, we popped entirely. It, it worked out. It worked out well. Okay. That actually worked better than I thought. What a combo, ladies and gentlemen. For a nice little fortified BD defend. Uh, now I should probably put this on smart targeting, though, because the spikes are being used for not really much at all. Yeah, they went for a banana central. I'm gonna go for more banana. I'm gonna go for more village farms then. If you're gonna read for farms, I'm gonna do the exact same. Don't have to use biker ability against these. We'll just slowly take them down. <clears throat> Can I get a bomb blitz in here? Bomb blitz just in the middle for a nice cleanup would be nice. Oh, uh, they're dead. They're dead. Please, bro. Why? 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 Does everyone die, dude? What happened to whole masters, guys? What happened?